Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, you uh, see, you're, you're, you board the plane from your homeland, and you're, th you're uh, a moment of uh, maybe sadness over uh, take you that you're leaving home, you're la leaving family, and you're landing in a strange land where you know nobody and. Uh, you know what you don't know what to expect but imagine when you land in that land and find brothers that are closer than your own family that's what I find in you and brothers and that are my brotherhood with you is not does not start and end on this earth it may start here yes but we live here what hundred years on the average say but my brotherhood with you goes eternally inshallah we will be in Jannah forever eternally so we I, I land amongst you my brothers in Jannah not only in the Jannah of dunya but the Jannah of al akhirah so I'm glad to meet you and I feel comforted seeing brothers like yourselves the subject that my brother Wasim uh, has pondered about is a huge, huge subject. You know, I could take off from where he left and add lots, lots more. Actually, he only scratched a very, very far, you know, from afar, uh, the subject of, of uh, the probabilities and the chance of uh, something happening by chance. Uh, and this is a much more, even more than, I'll just give you one, one number. It's the probability of an atom, of, a, of, of a, uh, excuse me, of a cell uh, to, to take place. Cell, one, you know, something that millions of cells are dropping off my hands as I shake them now. Yeah, one cell, it would take one, the chance of one, to 10 to the power 4,000 for one cell to happen by chance. 4,000 meaning 4,000 zeros in front of one. And uh, like he said, anything that is less than the probability of one to 10 to the power 50 is considered scientifically to be absolute zero. But that's not the subject. I, in, in fact, there are, he talks about atoms. You know, you can talk about electrons. Electrons, they uh, orbit the, the uh, 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 nucleus, which is made of protons and neutrons. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he does not, subhanahu wa jalla jalala, hold that electron to actually orbit the nucleus, we, co we collapse to nothing. The whole world collapse to less than this big. Yeah, we collapse if, it, if these electrons were not to orbit the nucleus. And actually there are 37 particles that the electron itself is so huge compared to them. One of them is called the quark. Yeah, like you say, I, like I said, it's a huge subject. But let me just digress from the, all of that and say, tonight we want to talk at least about the beauty of Islam. One thing you can, and we cannot be thankful enough to Allah, one thing we should think about is the fact that your neighbor, a Christian, has more than 100 different uh, versions of his considered to be holy book, the Bible. More than 100 versions. And every other year a new version came out. Right? No matter where you go, you have only one version of Quran. Preserved word by word, letter by letter, vowel by vowel. Right? If uh, once uh, there was a comparative religion in the U.S. Uh, in, a in a U.S. university, 
and uh, I heard of the of the session, so I thought I'd go and drop by and you see what, see what they are saying. And the brother, I was standing at the door, I didn't have a seat, and the brother recited uh, an ayah, and he made a mistake in a vowel, instead of a, he said e, he said hamda, he said hamdu, for example, right, or hamdi, instead of hamda. And I stopped him and corrected him. And he, mashallah, was uh, smart enough to, to use that. And he said, look, this man over there I have never lived, uh, seen in my life. And he would not even allow me to make a mistake in one vowel, let alone change a whole chapter. In the uh, Christian Bible, if you are Orthodox, you have 80 books. And if you have, if you're uh, Catholic, you have 73 minus 7, 80 minus 7. And if you are Protestant, you have 66, 73 minus 7. And then there are many versions, uh, it depends on which year that Bible is produced, even if it is the same King James Version. King James Version, the new King James Version, 1974, 1977, and so on. You know, it just keeps changing all the time. So one of the beauties of Islam is that, and that we don't appreciate, is that we have a book that not one word can change. And no matter, you know, this, this one I am holding in my hand is a translation. But the translation is not Quran. Quran is Arabic. If you translate any sacred book, it does not become, it, it loses its, uh, its quality. It's not sacred anymore. Yeah? And you cannot translate everything. I will give you an example. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahman ar-rahim. Alif lam mim. Thalika al-kitabu la rayba. There's one stop. And there is the other version, there is another way of reciting. Alif lam mim. Thalika al-kitabu la rayba fihi. Hudan lil muttaqin. And it has two different meanings. Depending on you stop, alif lam mim dalik al kitabu la rayba, stop, or alif lam mim dalik al kitabu la rayba fihi. A translator cannot encompass that in translation. And that, this is a minute example. So I'm saying, I would like, love you to, I would love for you to, to encourage yourselves and certainly the youngsters to learn Arabic as well as, as they can. It is sad that I am in Al Muhammadi Masjid now, and you are Muslims, and I am Muslim. Everyone in, in here is a Muslim, and we cannot speak Arabic, the language of Quran, the language of Jannah. We have to use a third language, which says, for example, uh, fortunately, fortunately is a Kafir language, a Kafir word. It is drawn, with, drawn from the word Fortuna, or from the goddess Fortuna the goddess of luck in the Greek mythology. We should never use that word, fortunately, unfortunately. It's a shirk word. It's a kufr word. But this is part of the problem of what? English. You cannot run away from this. Yeah? Uh, so, but alhamdulillah, the Arabic language is pure from all of these shirkiyat, these errors, these faults. So I encourage you encourage us to learn Arabic so we can learn our deen well. There was a, a, a scholar from India, from Bangalore, actually uh, originally from, uh, from uh, what is it, the, the, uh, what is uh, in the north, la ilaha illallah, I forgot the name. And he produces a, a, a magazine, an Islamic magazine. Once he passed by me, this is in Damman, Saudi Arabia. He produces there and, and he, it is printed in India, distributed in India, and he gets his, his copies. So he dropped by and, and left me a copy. And I opened it and I read it and I found them. I said, Sheikh, you have mistranslated the hadith. It doesn't mean this, it means that. He said, what can we do without you Arabs? <laughs> Yeah? I am not 
uh, I'm not here uh, uh, bragging about being an Arab or not. We are all, alhamdulillah, Muslims. Nothing, nothing to do with our color, race, and nationality. This is jahiliya. Jahiliya, uh, the Islam is you and I are brothers. Uh, whether you are black or white, tall, short, fat, thin, male, female, it doesn't really matter. So, are we going to realize, and I underline, realize the beauty of Islam? See, uh, my brother is moving his phone to tell me, hey, it's time. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I want just to tell you, suppose you have a beautiful box wrapped very beautifully. And inside it is a very precious and beautiful gift, right? Does it, is it good enough for me to put the box on, the, on that shelf or whatever shelf and watch the, the box from outside and say it is a beautiful box? I know inside there is a beaut beautiful and very precious gift. Is it enough? Would you do any uh, uh, this with any gift that you would receive? Hmm? How about if you, the box drops and you crush? You know, you step on that box and it is crushed and it loses even its beauty. This, the beautiful gift is still inside, right? But what did you do? You ev even the box, the nice looking box you crushed with your foot, maybe your foot had some grease on it and so it is not only crushed but also it looks filthy. That's what we are doing to our Islam. Islam is left in the box. We are not opening the box. Not, let alone, not only that, we are crushing the box. And not only that, we are crushing it with a dirty uh, sh shoes. So we are putting stains on the used to be nice looking box. So when are we going to our, do ourselves a favor, realize Islam? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayuha alladheena amanu, idkhulu fi silmi kaffa. All those who believe, enter, join, come into Islam in totality. What is Islam? Total, willful, peaceful submission to the will of Allah in every respect of life. Are we going to start today, and I want everyone that is in attendance to please bring this message that my brother and I have conveyed to ten, each one of you, to ten some people that are not here, including your wives and daughters and, and neighbors, and your your. Uh, uh, a workmate, whatever, uh, your uh, associates, please, let's take the habit of whatever we learn in a masjid or in a khutbah, jumu'ah or whatever, that we take it and feel responsible that it is a ilm that we have to pass. And had the Sahaba radiallahu anhum not passed the knowledge of Islam to us, where would we be Muslims today? They could have sufficed, enjoyed the neighborhood of Mecca and Medina and stayed there. But where did they, what the, read history, where did they go? To the end of the world. So, I don't, I'm not asking you to go to the end of the world like, uh, like a beautiful man like here, who came from all the way from Melbourne to uh, teach people how to do dawah. I'm asking you to then go to the next, to the neighbor, to the next street. Please, we owe it to ourselves. If you see, excuse me, one, one more little story. I want to ask you, if you are a defense minister and you are supposed to protect 100,000 acres, right? And you defend it, defend that area 90% efficiently. First battle, what will, after the first battle, how much would, be remain, uh, would remain? from that 100,000 uh, uh, acres. You, you lose, you are defending it 90% efficient. So only 90% will, will remain. So you'll, you will end up with what? 90 only. Next time 81, next time 72, next time 63. 
you are going lower and lower because what? Because you are defending. Now, now suppose instead of defending, you are aggressive and you win only 10% every time you attempt. You win 10%, not defend, but gain 10%. Then the 100 becomes what? 110, 121, 132. Right? So let us, you see that is why in Israel they do not have a, a, a ministry of defense. They have a ministry of war. Jazakum Allah khairu salam alaykum wa rahmatullah.